Ladies and gentlemen, we are recording live from Casa de Bling Studios. It's your boy Chingo. Thank you, everybody, all the patrons, everybody tuning in. Shout out to all the members of the Thea that's in the Discord. If you want to join the community, hit us up, patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales. Um, I was talking to Rob about switching it, like switching the name of it to where it might could just be patreon.com like Chingo Bling community. Or something like that, just to let people know, like it's not it's not gonna be all red pill politics type shit. But uh thank you guys so much for joining. Uh, I'm having an excellent day, man. I'm I'm knocking out episodes from home, got side of Blink Studios, got to go on a nice walk with the fam, kick it with the baby, uh barbecued last night. I'm trying to work on my tan, big die. I'm getting ready for Florida. We're headed to Naples, Florida, March 5th. And uh, got to work on my tan. That's already this Sunday. We have uh, Juan Perez, man. What's, what's up, up, brother? What's up, what's up? Fresh in town from San Antonio. How was your yes, uh, How was your trip? It was good. It was good. It was good. I get to see my son and go over some stuff with him. It was a long weekend. Long weekend. Yeah, why, why did it feel so, like, intense? Uh, That's what it seemed like. Just dealing with my mom <laughs> and then my son and everything, but just with my mom mostly. Oh yeah, your, your mom giving you a headache, bro. Uh, a lot of times, a lot of times. I love her, but it's just one of those things, you know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody you don't get too deep, deep. I know, right? Like, dude, everybody's going through something, man. Like, people have no idea how. Like, you just never know, man. That's just how life is. You going It's gonna be trials and tribulations. Well, it's it's also the, so. I guess the whole thing is is like kind of one of those things where. Like this lifestyle is a lot different than like what I've been used to and what I've been accustomed to. So them seeing me do it is like they're not on board with it. You know what oh, I mean? Oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's just like, what are you doing? Like, yeah, pretty much. You're so, telling dick jokes to the people. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. No, so it's it's just like that because it's like I come from like more of like a structured thing, and you know I come from having uh being married and stuff, and then. Having the the big now, now you're rolling you're rolling stone out here, big guy. Now it's just flowing, you know what I mean. Now it's just going, but I there's more potential in this, and plus on top of that, it's it's more my speed. Like this is like so far has been like super happy compared to like I get into the mundane like repetition of like everything, and it just bored the hell out of me to yeah. the point where it was just like miserable. Ah oh, man, there, and you know what, man. Um, Good thing you're not one of these people, but some people, bro, when they miserable, it's like misery loves company. That's why I was married. No, <laughs> Matter of fact, while you had to grab that bottle of pie tequila behind you, big time. Major shout out to our podcast sponsor, Pie Tequila. You see how light it's empty, bro. This is literally just a prop now because it's so delicious that it did not last in my household. Um <laughs> I got this bottle right before uh, Valentine's, so it, it's it's gone. This is a hundred percent agave pie tequila, uh, pie like the number. Some of y'all don't know about calculus and all that. Uh, I might have to do a deep dive on irrational numbers and the number pie and why it's such a special number. But uh, uh, the folks over at Pie Tequila they named it that for many reasons. If you have not heard the episode, go listen to it. It's eighty proof. They've taken the Texas tequila market by storm. It's super delicious, uh, insanely smooth, dangerously smooth. Dangerously smooth. Uh, they're sponsoring the tour and they're sponsoring the podcast. They're all in saying, hey, Chingo, what's up, bro? You got to do some of these um, meet and greets and bottle signings, bro. I might be doing bottle signings while I'm on tour, and that would be so magnificent. And the worst thing is you had two of these bottles, the white one and the black one. He had the other one at the other house, and he took this one, the aged one, home. And yeah. It's already gone. Oh, yeah, it's gone. Uh, is that white bottle gone, too? No. Oh, okay. I haven't touched it. I was okay. like, man, I, could you imagine just getting drunk all night? I wouldn't be able to get anything done. I I kind of enjoy that type of buzz, man. Like, sipping on that, like, um, I, I feel like I finally got a break to kick it at home. Mm -hmm. For for whatever reason, I, I just kind of felt like like I, I haven't really put my roots in. It, it literally feels we've been here at this house for shit, probably like ten months. No, I, I can't do math. I think we moved in like July, 
so maybe like eight months ago or whatever that math is but it still feels like we're barely still getting into a routine just to put it in perspective whenever y'all first got with me or i first got with y'all the grind y'all had was crazy like y'all were, they were always on the move there yeah. there's like no like in order for me to keep up i had to like literally move to houston just to be like okay are y'all free now okay no okay now uh, just yeah. because it's just you guys move a million miles an hour so and it probably wasn't the most efficient moving <laughs> yeah <laughs> not the most efficient but mm -hmm. but i mean it, you you both it's just because you both have a bunch of hustles like it's crazy it's crazy yeah. like you would think you were the one with all the hustles but then you see my, my wife soul is yeah no all over the place her, uh, her apparel online is ridiculous and then she does pop-ups and she's in a boutique on top of all that and then having to manage the, the damn storage of all that stuff oh my well God. by the time i don't know if we had you helped us move out of those yeah, storage yeah, units you move out of storage yeah yeah we had those storage units man it was crazy but uh now we're down to two houses and <laughs> occupying occupying two houses but um i'm super excited man like this year like i keep saying man i'm gonna work on my tan <clears throat> You know, I was letting the beard grow, but it just gets a little too straggly mm -hmm. and I just start trimming it down. I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to let it grow and let it live decent. Me neither. I always cut it after a certain point because then it just starts annoying me. And you don't even have grays. Yeah, I do. Where? All right there. Barely. It's grays. I'm 30. I'm, I'm way younger than you. So the fact that I have grays already, it's like. I got a shit ton of gray. So like when they start getting uh, straggly, like the the little you start trimming the little the split ends or the long the little long ones that are popping out and that that'll last you a little bit next thing you know it's like all right bro what are we doing but uh but anyway hell of a day man been knocking out episodes here from home uh went on a walk with the fam i barbecued last night that leftover barbecue is in the oven right now in a foil and i ain't gonna lie dog i wrecked it i killed it yesterday the day before yesterday, eh, not so much. Yeah. What have you been doing outside of that? Just cooking and outside of the new material and stuff? Uh, hell no. <laughs> nah, just really, man, we have a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes that really we've just been trying to like formulate a plan to just catch up. Like, uh, I don't know if you noticed, but at the other house, I put the, the <laughs> it's not done because it has to get programmed properly. Okay. But I put the, the pin code. Lock. Oh, you put it in. Okay, yeah, I wasn't here for that. Yeah, I put the pin code lock, but uh, I might have to start over because because uh, <laughs> it wasn't doing the thing. I was like, ah, shit, and then it was time to leave. But um, I hurt my knee, as you can see. Yeah, hurt my knee. So um, you know, jujitsu and all MMA is going to have to be out of the picture for another couple of days until I'm confident enough where I'm not going to make it worse. So I'm going to see if I can. Um, yeah. Yeah, maybe go to 24 Hour Fitness today. If my vieja. Do arms or what? Just upper, yeah, upper. like back or something, shoulder or something like that. Um, I, yeah, I definitely got to get on that. So, how's your gym regimen been, brother? Uh, well, every time I go see my son, every time I go see my son, I don't really, it's just off the table. Oh, so it's like rest day. Yeah, it's kind of like rest day. And then that's also like my cheat day, like just because he, he likes to go out to eat and stuff. So, I'll eat, I'll just, eat dirty whenever i'm with him like i'll eat pizza whatever he wants and that way he's just not eating and i'm just staring at him like yeah 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 talking to him like a weirdo yeah like uh when my wife was hardcore bodybuilder like we'd be yeah that's why she was like shredded you know she was fucking swollen and shredded but um because we'd be like at family things like we're all in san antonio or we're at uh great wolf lodge with the kids or we're having barbecue on the ri uh, by the river in san antonio mm -hmm. And she's busting out her little Tupperware with like 16 almonds, like 3.2 ounces of salmon <laughs> and two little pieces of broccoli or whatever. And it's like, that's, that's my meal for now. Oh, damn. So I don't know. Uh, it's summertime and we're going to try to tighten up, man. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting in that pool. I went to check on it today and the, um, the little container you're supposed to put the, como se llama? The, uh, chlorine uh -huh. the chlorine tabs in there it's like a little tower and, and it drips water to dissolve it well it was empty because i hadn't really been fucking with the pool i'm like eh, it looks good i don't think i need to fuck with it <laughs> but i've been home more i've been home 
and I go to service that and I, I put it in the service mode on the on the keypad controller so that everything shuts off. I open up that little tower. I take a look. Okay, there's no chlorine tablets. And those chemicals are strong as fuck, bro. Yeah. So I had to like put on a glove, load in the tablets, put it back in filter mode or whatever running. And then the water starts dripping. <laughs> you got to let water drip in there before you close it. Yeah. So the water's going. And I'm like, damn, it still hasn't reached the top so that I can close it. Because if not, you get air bubbles in there. Mm -hmm. And I like take a peek and I put my face right over the, uh, the cylinder. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, like, I guess the water rose up. So basically chlorine fumes, like... <laughs> <laughs> like straight to the grill just i was like oh fuck i was like ah it's burning everything and then i'm not gonna lie bro probably like an hour later which was today i started feeling like real gaggy like nauseous and i think it was too much coffee um uh, i think it was too much coffee i was fasted and and then i think i snacked a little bit and then took a whole bunch of vitamins Okay. So I think the vitamins might have did it, but hey, that's neither here nor there. I'm 43. You got to take your vitamins. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, man, I have uh, Naples this Sunday, dude. I don't know if my wife, I don't know if she was able to get you a flight for this one, bro. No, I'm not going to this okay. one. I'm not going to Naples, but I'm going Odessa. To, I'm going to California, Odessa, and all those. Perfect, Odessa, Texas, March 11th. You can catch Juan on stage with myself. Fresno, California, March 23rd. So we're going to be road dogs in Cali. We have Visalia, Merced. Oh, dang. Uh, it's all yeah. run. Because after Fresno, yeah, it's two two more cities. And that's good because one of my friends from California actually hit me up. She's like, hey, are you going to be on these shows? I was like, I don't know yet. I'll let you know. And then she told me. Where does she live? Over by Fresno. Oh, perfect. So uh, yeah. shout out to Giovanni, man, all the members of the Thea mm -hmm. in that area in the Central Coast. Um I think Giovanni's gonna be there March 23rd in Fresno. He he tells me he's like, man, that's like a historic theater. That's like a good look. Oh wow. Yeah. So shout out to Leonard, uh, the promoter. Um, I think Darren Carter is on that show with us, but I, I gotta I gotta just double check with the wife and and everything else. Actually, El, El Gordo Mamon is on that one. That's cool. And I think Darren is on the other two. So yeah, definitely looking forward Sounds to that. Sounds like fun. Oh yeah, it's I'm excited. Lit. I'm excited. Jingle's got a bunch of new jokes, man. Like Javi, Javi saw it in Corpus. He was like, "Man, he, he I just he was like, dude, what, he got when did he get all these new jokes?" I was like, "Yeah, just out of nowhere, man. Just he really worked on them and it came out. We were all trying out some new stuff and and mm -hmm. it's all been working out." Oh yeah, I was due. I was due for new material, and I gotta go back and listen to my um, to my sets to just. Cause, dude, sometimes I'll be trying like different tags. Yeah, yeah. I rearrange stuff. Sometimes, like I might have to go back and listen. Like, okay, that definitely keep that, or that's hit or miss. Cut that shit. Yeah. Um. Like, really looking forward to like, cause we're juggling so much. Mm -hmm. It's like, um. So hey, dude. So at what point do you really? Do you just do it when you're on stage? <laughs> like the day of, like. All right, I'm catching a flight. Let me listen to this last set in Corpus and see see how that went. Well, sometimes you have to. Sometimes you got to sacrifice one joke to try and figure it like new tags. Like I'm going to work on this specific joke, but the rest of them you get all the hitters. But like that's, you know, that's you got to sacrifice one of the jokes just in case. But sometimes they come out funnier than before. So what, what do you mean sacrifice a joke? What do you mean? Like, just in case that joke does bomb, it's like, ah, oh, damn. Because you know you have a good version of it, but uh -huh. to make it better, yeah. sometimes it's like, okay, I'm going to try something new with this joke. And then if it yeah. bombs, you just got to go to a, another hitter. The problem I've always had is, like, if I try something new with a new joke, like a newer joke, and it was good, I'd try something new. And my only problem I've ever had is if it hits really, really hard, and the, the stuff I had coming after can't follow it. It's like, fuck. So, like, I've had that happen a few times where it's like, I try something new and it hits super hard. And then my, my follow-up joke could not follow it. And I was like, whoa. Okay. Oh, like, so the new thing hit. hit. The new yeah, thing. it hits so hard. Like, because I, I usually have some, like, a real good joke afterwards just in case it bombs. But then there's some times where that joke just, the little tweak just, like, really hit home. And it's like this gut laugh. And it's like, I can't follow that. <laughs> well, <laughs> the next joke yeah. can't follow it. You know what it is sometimes, bro? I feel like sometimes 
when you wing a joke or bust out a joke that you had just abandoned years ago or tell a joke for the first time, it's something about, it's something about like just being in the moment and like kind of uh, winging it a little yeah. bit to where it just comes across like you're not 100 sure so it, it might come across like conversational and just something about the delivery yeah so so um that's so what happened that's what happened in uh what was that place the island uh spi spi that's what happened there i opened up with that that just that new i, I didn't even mean to do it it just mm -hmm. came out just came out and it it just hit so hard that I was like, none of my jokes out. Like they were working, people were still laughing, but it wasn't that from the gut laugh like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was crazy. Well, yeah, that's so important to like win them over from the beginning. Um, I forget what I was gonna ask you right just before. Oh, no, no, you're good. Um, you were saying. Oh, this is what I was gonna ask you. So Rogan's Comedy Club is it open? No, it, it sh oh, it should have been open this month. Cause they're waiting for Tom to come off the road and stuff, so I don't know. I think Bert's still overseas, though. I don't. I don't know. Think it's open yet. Damn, where the hell Bert at? Well, Tom did overseas, and then Bert did overseas. So the they're shows. doing their international tour. International tour. And then whenever Bert comes back, I think he's off for like a month or so, and then he's going right back into like a big another big tour. Oh, like, oh my god! god damn, dude. man, Bert Kreischer, man, let me borrow some money, bro. And then Tom Segura is like finished touring for. And uh, until he decides he ever wants to tour again, he, he might not tour again, dude. There's some this okay. I think we stumbled across a nugget, uh, about halfway into the show. Burnout, have you experienced? Have you ever experienced burnout? Yes, okay. Tell, tell the audience a little bit, man, of, of a time you experienced burnout. Burnout was whenever it was in my first marriage when. So I had stopped working at, at Wells Fargo because I put my wife through school. And she decided to go and get her job for a degree, which is teaching. So then it was my turn to go back to school. So then I quit my Wells Fargo job. She had gotten a job, but it wasn't at a school district. It was like a magnet school or something, but it wasn't what she wanted. So then she she ends up quitting, didn't tell me. And I was just going to school full time. And I had like a, just like a, a lot of classes all at once. And so I had stopped going. And then she tells me like six days after she quit, like she waited a long time. To tell me that she quit and i was like oh so me i'm just like a fucking you tell me what the problem is i'm gonna fix it yeah. so i started reaching out to friends i got three different jobs like real quick it was like i had my mom pull some strings that because she used to work there a long time ago at taco cabana mm -hmm. like she was a manager so she pulled some strings to get me in quick yeah so then i had that job and then i got a a pizza job over in Somerset and then the the Taco Cabana was over on Southeast Military and then uh her uh my ex-wife's dad was running a cleaning business so I was working for him too so I juggled them all by this one I worked during the day this one I worked during during the night after I get off of school and then I would and you were still going to school yeah and then after that I would drive over to the Dominion from Somerset so which, Somerset is what Southwest side or? yeah so Somerset is like over by Southwest side, over like outside of San Antonio. It's like its own little city. And I would drive basically from there all the way to like Fiesta, Texas. Um, so that's like an hour drive, 45 minute drive just to go clean offices. And then if I was able to get home, I would and then go to sleep and then play with my son and then go, go to work or school the next day and stuff. So it was like juggling all these things and dude, it just, I was sleeping in the car like i would take naps just like 30 minute like power naps this is before you discovered c4 before i discovered energy <laughs> drinks i wish i would have discovered these earlier and vitamins it would help me so much but like then it was just i was it was like the worst ever in my life because it was like i was sleep deprived i was like falling asleep behind the wheel but luckily i would wake up like i got away with it but Probably should have died a few times. Damn. Because I was falling asleep and then I was just crashing out like in and, the car. And, you, and your chick at the time, she wasn't working at all. Well, she was trying to find another job. Oh. So yeah. And then and then finally I had to like round it up to get a like a bank job again. And then from there I went to the oil field. And that's whenever we moved from San Antonio to Odessa. But yeah, I was burnt out spent. How long out. were you doing the three jobs and the school thing? 
that whole semester until I got out of the school and then and then I just stopped it all together and then we moved to Odessa for oil field because then I was like okay let's just let's stop everything let's go to Odessa so I could get this 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 oil field job that's going to pay me really good and since there's no school districts that were hiring in San Antonio at the time the plan was to go over there and so she could get teaching over there because they were needing teachers so I was like perfect you get your job we work here for like a year or two, get the schooling under your belt, then come back. And then you can just pick any district because they were saying that she was she didn't have enough. Uh, what is it? Qualifications because she's a new teacher. They would rather take veterans. You know, what I mean? Mm-hmm. so I was like, let's get some school years under your belt and then we'll come back and try this again. <laughs> that's not how it worked out. Oh, wow. Not Dude. And that's when we got divorced. <laughs> oh, la madre. Man, burnout. Uh, anybody that's tuning in right now, let us know in the discord um let us know in the comment well the discord oh comments on youtube i think we might put this up public uh, i've been wanting to get more of this content out right if we're going to take time to make content we need the eyeballs and we might as well just get it out but you know all the members of the thea man we're going to make sure that y'all get hooked up with like an advanced release of the what did he said podcast which is a a great podcast has been getting rave reviews uh i sent you a few clips so mm-hmm. let me know what you think about those uh, shout out to uh, Javi Luna, who's been manning the uh, the co-host chair. Uh, he he drives up to H Town, and and we knock out episodes. Uh, we had that boy T on a couple episodes, joining us. But um, but dude, I I've been burnt out a few times. I mean, like like when the road gets really grueling, I, like especially like back in my music days where. You were just inexperienced or you know you were young you had energy so you'd sign up for shit. like all right we're gonna be three different places on cinco de mayo you know it's like yeah. we're flying in at this time you get off stage you're hopping on a plane um i can only imagine tom segura mm. burt kreischer that's like his mode like he's energized by every night different place you know but friends on the tour bus don't know where i am hopping on a plane hopping off on he a stage two tour buses now so two just for him or two, yeah, one, one for, for him crew. and then one for the crew now. He's one separated. for the crew. Crew meaning like production people, management. Mm-mm. Well, yeah, but like mostly the other comics. Oh, the other comics. Mm-hmm. At one point, bro, when I did a, this one music run where we, I had a show in Houston and a bunch of my friends, my manager at the time, uh, David Gaona, he had a, this is a funny story as we start to wrap up this podcast. He had a, like you know the little short bus shuttles like a little airport like a ho- like a hotel shuttle yeah yeah like road trip like road trip the little, bu- the little yeah, bus yeah he had a little one like that <laughs> which was cool though because that's like a badass asset to have i think yeah. later he went on to use it as um as a like a carpool service to galveston like people park their shit and boom he'll, him and whoever was in charge of it they'll take you to galveston the beach but anyway at the time i had a show in houston and i was flying out like the next morning or something mm-hmm. or then or the day like 48 hours after that but like a bunch of my friends like i think like fade dog flatline probably lucky eddie deville stunna everybody had a plus one so it was like this guy brought a person everyone brought their like helpers slash whatever road manager or whatever and they started driving because we i think the next tour date was like something insane like like um yakima washington like eastern washington and then i think from there dude it's like a day off or two and then you're in the shuttle so now at this point i'm in the shuttle i think it was like a rental van Mm -hmm. and a shuttle so it was almost like two it's almost like that was our tour two uh tour buses and um it was so insane because let me just give you a sneak peek of what the hell was going on at the time So I had just signed a distribution deal with Asylum Records. They're under Warner. And I was uh, campaigning to release the They Can't Deport Us All album. And I was just putting a lot of pressure on myself. It it was a long road to even get to that point. And we were literally just like, we had a ton of posters in the back of the van. Like the road is so grueling that the, the dudes that came with us to specifically put up posters like they didn't even really have time it's like they had to rest too so it's like if we're in the hotel and we're getting ready to like do a show and then hit the road again yeah it's like poster dude we literally came back with all the freaking posters 
And it was so grueling that uh, my boy Lucky, Lucky Luciano, it was probably like a two week run. I think like one week in, mm -hmm. he was already like, okay, this doesn't make sense for me that I'm out here. And I, I totally get it. Like, I didn't take any offense, but it was kind of like, I'm out here with, we're on Chingo's tour with a whole bunch of rap homies. Yeah. And obviously there's alcohol. There's probably like female fans and just a little young lifestyle of like trying to be the man. All, of course, all kinds of paraphernalia, mm. <laughs> all kinds of paraphernalia going on. And he literally decided, you know, I remember uh, maybe one day I, I, I got to get him on, on this show to, so he can give his side. But I just remember it being one of those like, uh, I'm catching a flight home. Like this is this is this is not what I signed up for type of thing. And, and sure enough, bro, he he went home and said, fuck this. I'm going to knock out a mixtape. So he's like you know hey it's cool being in california and all these places with all my friends and on this uh sh little shuttle bus but he's like i'm gonna knock out a title and and just get on my grind and sure enough man he just started dropping like mixtape after mixtape after mixtape but i was burnt out dealing with this new york record label yeah like having my friends kind of resent me because i'm in the front van like the big um what would you call that one like the uh like the Econa Lodge type of van, like basically where like all the luggage and the posters and and there's maybe like two seats in the front, maybe one row. Like a Sprinter van? Uh, it wasn't as nice as a Sprinter, but it was like a, what do you call those, man? Like a storage van. What do you call those? Uh, a utility van, a hauling van. Um, a U-Haul? No, not a U-Haul. Like basically it wasn't a minivan. Yeah. It was more like a, like a big ass Dodge or oh, some okay. shit, right? and um like a dually no not a dually it was like a fucking 16 passenger van oh, per okay. se right okay. some shit you could rent from um i can't even remember the name of that business bro but they used to rent vans <laughs> but anyway dude um i was having my friends resent me because I, I was looking like the lame like the square because i was in the front van having to do like radio interviews play promoter have conference calls, marketing meetings. Like you're like in the middle of nowhere. It was yeah. just for the birds. It's like, why did I do this again? Why did I sign up to put out this album with all this pressure? And it's like, you just run into this thing where like, it's the end all be all like first week sales mean so much. You know, it was just so much pressure, dude. Like I get a stomach ache, even like thinking about those days. Um, just my personal life was in shambles. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, that's definitely one of the times I felt burnt out. And I ain't gonna lie, man, like as of late, recently, I mean, it's no surprise that we're conducting these these episodes from Casa de Bling. It's like, bro, I'm so burnt out. Like, I just need to be home. Like this last weekend where we were off, you know, from shows and everything, I like needed that weekend. Like yeah. I saw my sisters. We went to, um, I took the, my two little kids. I uh, picked up my mom mm -hmm. and then I met up with my sisters and my brother-in-law and everybody, all my cousins, I'm nephews, nephews and nieces at uh, the little, little league softball thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, little league uh, baseball thing where like my niece's sons were playing. My nephew's daughter was playing the recharge. Yeah. Recharge man. R and R like Frito pie, just basic shit that people just were like to be normal. <laughs> yeah. Just to be fucking Dude, normal. I thank you so much, bro. Um, <laughs> I literally, I literally told uh, Rob and Mighty Sword yesterday. We were at uh, at the other crib and we we're having a little huddle, and I was like, "Bro, I needed this weekend." And I told myself, "I am gonna barbecue if it kills me." I was like, "I don't care if this meat is burnt, chewy, tough. Um, <laughs> that's not even the point." I was like, "I'm gonna light a fire." And put some meat on the grill and put on some music yeah. and sip on something like a regular fucking texan human being and to most people they're probably like like bro what's stopping you it's like you don't understand when you feel like you're spinning so many plates like you can't even catch your breath i think from my perspective because like i get to, I, I i'm in the i'm in the easy seat right now like i'm still coming up it's still i'm barely four years in the comedy <laughs> But like picking up stuff from you, Steve Trevino, from from John Polar Bear, how he blew up so fast and what he has to deal with. 
and these little nuggets that you guys give me as far as like all the stresses y'all have to go through and things to look for bro i'm like oh i'm so glad i get to witness all of that so i know how to prepare myself to get in that seat because to take on that much pressure i think john just put out a, a, a like a message on his facebook what do you say he was like guys i just want to be like transparent with you guys and just really let you guys know like i haven't put putting out sketches like i used to because you know i'm, I'm honestly scared to put it out because it's like so much pressure to like to live up to the other sketches and i gotta do it this certain way and oh dude with touring bro with, with everything it's like it's almost like that weight he had and then finally seeing that post and then everything you're under and i'm just like dude that is a hot seat to be in and like I get it if you're a fan and you're fans of like these guys, but like they have to wear that pressure of all that, you know what I mean? And still like give you the time and, and the energy and then the content and, and having to completely keep doing it and, and, doing, and doing it and have a life. longevity of it. Too. And, dude, I've been in this game for a minute, but like, and have try to balance a normal life so that you can stay inspired yeah. and you can have a life and have some experience to talk about and to create sketches and to be, you know, be at events with your family and observe people. And like, that's one of the ways I write, but, um, uh, but man, I was going to say something. Cause you just, you about just, Holder. um, Oh yes. Okay. Ready. When he said having to navigate people's expectations, mm -hmm. I am not going to lie, bro. Like it, first of all, shout out to our sponsors, man. Um, like I said earlier, Pai Tequila, they're sponsoring the Texas tour dates. Uh, they're sponsoring the podcast as well. We have like Tehuacan Mineral Water. Uh, they're just sponsoring me just in general, right? So they get, you know, we make sure that they supply us with a bunch of waters and we enjoy it. We like it. And, you know, from time to time, their product is in a picture on social media, whatever. So they're great. Their expectations are very clear. Um, like, I ain't gonna lie, man, you know, with the Tia, and this particular show, like we haven't even talked about politics today. I kind of want to navigate this show because I was getting stressed out over the expectations that everybody had. You know, I was like, oh, I have to fuck. How do I jujitsu my way out of this? Like, I know the, the sponsors have their expectations, but at the same time, you know, that's that's easy. That's manageable. At the same time, like the patrons expect a certain length of an episode, X amount of drops and a certain amount of politics in each one and i don't really know i've gotten a mixed bag of feedback and some people are like bro we just want to hear what you got to say and we just want to support what you got going on and it doesn't have to be fucking nancy pelosi ah, or whatever like ukraine ohio ah fuck what's going on world war three uh the, the dollar's gonna collapse inflation yeah and i want to navigate this so that it's like um i don't want to be like oh it's kind of like jre you know, because everybody always references that. But like, depending on who I have on, we can have a conversation. I could listen. I could be curious. I could ask questions and have a cool convo that will ultimately be enjoyable for people to listen on their commute, treadmill in the morning, background noise. Yeah, it's kind of like what I was. I, I was telling Chingo this too. It's just like, I think you guys as fans and me as a fan, I'd rather much rather get to know you as far as like what is chingo really like i don't I, like i i know we already know where he stands with politics he's not afraid to say it but i don't want him to be boxed in and be frustrated every like i have every to talk about these you things. have to talk about it whenever it's like sometimes like like i was saying on one of the episodes i was like dude some of this i don't even know how to react to because it's like we all have like the same reaction to it it's like there's really not too much to say on some of the stuff because some of it's just outrageous oh, you like Sam you don't, Smith. we don't need to comment on it and make it funny or anything it's yeah, just yeah. like we can move on to different topics like i'd rather you not be boxed in and just be enjoy what you're talking about oh yeah have fun yeah God and forbid. If, if, God if, forbid. if something from politics comes up something from politics will come up like and then we'll talk about it but if it's something that you really in, like want to like do i gotta talk about that i gotta get this shit off my chest boom talk about it. or if we just want to talk about anything i think i think that is the perspective of doing because then then after that if you're just i have to do politics it's like you're doing it begrudgingly and you're just yeah, yeah, yeah you're just yeah. hating it and the people can see it and it's just like yeah it's so strange. there it is man that you said a mouthful right there like i apologize like 
you know, I just have to adjust my approach to it because I don't want y'all to be like, man, Chingo got a bad attitude. He act like <laughs> like they're making him. Like, did nobody make you have a political show? You wanted to address this stuff so that people can see where you're coming from. But uh, long story short, um, I really appreciate the community. And those that, you know, if some people, if they don't like some of these changes, like, oh, man, I, I wish it was the way it used to be where you talk about Nancy Pelosi for 20 minutes and then or whatever, whatever, like, you know, like we're like what you said about polar bear, man. Like it is very tough to navigate to be an artist, mm -hmm. to be a creative, and always have to factor in people's expectations. Like that right there, it just gives you a stomach ache. We're like, oh, I feel like they expect this or they want this. And from a stand-up comedy perspective, that right there is such a big dude. Maybe we'll talk off air and you'll you'll um I want to bounce an idea off of you of like, hey man, if I was to create a master class, what's a master class that makes sense for Chingo Bling? And how could we format a lesson that people, you know, like the jujitsu guys, mm -hmm. like uh, guard passing for $9.99, download my system or whatever. But like, um, that's a gem to let stand up comedians know, or even musicians, I think. But for now, comedians, when you go on stage, you must ignore the crowd's expectations, whether you're Chingo Bling and you're in your head thinking like, well, I know they know me from music or I know they know me from Canelo or they want me to behave like this or say these catchphrases. That's why it's such a curse sometimes to like people that get known off of TV shows or movies where mm -hmm. it's like, oh, bang, bang, bang. You got to do the bang, bang, bang uh, out the gate so they know you're the guy from Friday mm -hmm. or Mike Epps. They're going to be yelling shit at them. Um, but even from like um, a musician's point of view, like how do you reinvent and how do you pivot if you're gonna be still stuck with like, oh man, I remember the old Kanye or like, hey Jay-Z, <laughs> hey Jay-Z, what happened to them other beats, man? Now you doing beats like this? Yeah. they See, the thing is, is like, I guess with the algorithm stuff, what, what's been happening now is like, you try one thing and something pops, and then we continue to mimic it to make it just as good. And then we get boxed in and people forget that we're humans. And like, we have different aspects to us. Like, like for me, like I, I, I went to school for teaching for theology, now comedy. So I have all these different aspects to me. You were, you were a musician, DJ, uh, DJ, uh, comedian, you know, your dad, all these different things. And you're older now too, where you're just like, you know what I mean? Like, and like like having to do the pool and stuff you've never done that before so like you're you're discovering these little things about yourself and having to evolve and then put that into your craft it's not always going to be the same it's going to always be different you're going to your material grows because art imitates life so it's like you got to live it is that's that's what it is and so the fans have to kind of be understanding of that a little bit and i think for the most part your fans are because a lot of them are always coming to the shows like Bro, I remember you for the '90s. Oh, dude, to see you grow and stuff like that. You just have some of the ones that are just like, dude, '90s, goddamn, like bro. Or, you know what I mean? But early like, 2000s, big dog. <laughs> get it right, mean? get they it right, big dog. Everybody else that's like, kind of like the begrudging ones that are just like, bro, what about your or Chata Boots? Why don't you do that again? Yeah, yeah. where, where the fuck's like, Cleto at, bitch? <laughs> uh, oh, you don't got the males on you, bro. Why oh, you ain't got the males on you, bro? Yeah. So and, and yeah. you know what? Let's end it with this, man. Um, and I'm gonna piggyback off what you just said. One of the best comments I've ever gotten, like DM or some type of message, was um I believe she was a female, but she was basically saying, like, man, dude, you've grown up, you've come such a long way. Like, I'm so proud of you, like you have a beautiful family, like you've you've really uh kind of you know you've matured in a good way <laughs> yeah i think i remember saying that one it was something on i think it was like the penny like the thing you did with penny or something it was something it was something with it was like family. wow i remember you like, at, oh. at i remember you at, uh they were like at t-town you were skinny with this baggy <laughs> clothes and you know this and that and you know and i'm a human man so you just gotta roll with the punches and navigate it but hey we appreciate the love man we're gonna uh go downstairs and uh and continue the day because I, I believe like my wife has to go to chingo de cosas way chingo de cosas <laughs> but uh but hey i really appreciate everybody all the members of the theater everybody tuning in uh we're headed to naples florida this sunday uh and then uh of course odessa texas juan Perez will be there with us i believe javi luna oh, it's javi and israel. israel 
So Ooh. it's a big show. It's a theater. Ah, man. And Midland, don't be weird. Y'all can go to the Odessa Theater, man. Last time we went, they're like, well, Midland people don't go to Odessa, and Odessa don't, we don't mix. Like, yeah. Y'all can go to the show. Go to the theater, guys. It's freaking lovely Act, theater. Yeah. Actor it's Theater. Great. Hell of a lineup. Really looking forward to that. And of course, please tell a friend, all my California people, Fresno, California on March 23rd. After that, it's like Merced the next day, Visalia the day after that. Tons of tour dates. We're going everywhere. Uh, hit up the website, chingobling.com. All right. Y'all be good. Peace.